Good morning and welcome to worship here at Christus Victor Lutheran Church this morning. Um, it is glad, I am glad to have you here in the sanctuary as well as online live streaming. Um, yesterday we had a swim party at my house with um, the youth, which really was this crowd of children mm -hmm. came to my house and swam last night. We had a really good time and Walker was there and a friend of his. So it was really fun. They've started school, so it was nice to kind of do a yay, we're back at school thing and um, <laughs> ate some hot dogs and acted silly. So it was great. Um, we had our council retreat yesterday, which consisted of three of us. Um, four of us. I lied. There's four of us. Um, please know that we are looking for folks to join us in that leadership role. Um, but we met yesterday and started talking about events that are coming up that we normally um, take part in or do. And two of the things that um, are coming up in October are the trunk or treat and our German dinner, um, Reformation dinner. So Lisa is going to be making a list because she's heading up the trunk or treat. She's going to make a list of things she needs help with. But we need somebody who's willing to take on the um, German dinner and kind of be the spirit. Okay, well, we got that. Thank you, Peggy. Never mind. So we'll have a list for both of those in the help that we need so that we can make sure those are taken care of. Um, but we need bodies to help us out. And um, so as we come up with things, we'll let you know what we need and so forth. So... With that, I guess, let us, any, am I forgetting something? We're Sandy, am I forgetting anything? Okay. Huh? Okay. Let's start. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess, we confess that, that we, we are, are in bondage, bondage to sin, sin and, and cannot free ourselves. ourselves. We, we have, have sinned against you in thought, thought word, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. in the early 
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
be with you. And also with you. <clears throat> Let us pray. O oh God, you resist those who are proud and give grace to those who are humble. Give us the humility of your Son, that we may embody the generosity of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading is from the 25th, 25th chapter of Proverbs. Do not put yourself forward in the king's presence or stand in the place of the great. For it is better to be told, come up here, than to be put lower in the presence of a noble. What your eyes have seen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 112 will be read responsively. The congregation will read the yellow text. Praise the Lord. Happy are those who fear the Lord, who greatly delight in his commandments. Their descendants, Their descendants will be mighty in the land. The, the generation of the, of the upright, upright will, will be blessed. blessed. Wealth and riches are in their houses, and their righteousness endures forever. They, they rise, rise in the, the darkness, darkness as a light for the upright. They, they are, are gracious, gracious, merciful, and righteous. righteous. It is well with those who deal generously and lend, who conduct their affairs with justice. For, for the, the righteous, righteous will, will never, never be moved. moved. They, they will, will be remembered, remembered forever. forever. They are not afraid of evil tidings. Their hearts are firm, secure in the Lord. Their hearts, hearts are steady. Are they will not be afraid. In the end, they will look in triumph on their foes. They have distributed freely. They have given to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Their horn is exalted in honor. The wicked, the wicked see, see it and it. are angry. They gnash, they gnash their, their teeth, teeth and melt away. The desire of the wicked comes to nothing. The second reading is from the 13th chapter of Hebrews. Let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing that some have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those who are in prison as though you were in prison with them, those who are being tortured as, those, as though you yourselves were being tortured. Let marriage be held in honor by all, and let the marriage bed be kept undefiled, for God will judge fornicators and adulterers. Keep your lives free from the love of money, and be content with what you have, for he has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Remember your lenders, those who spoke the word of the God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Through him then, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God. That is, the fruit of lips that confess his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Gospel according to Luke, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On one occasion, when Jesus was going to the house of a leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. When Jesus, when Jesus, when Jesus noticed how the guests chose the place of honor, he told them a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. 
and the host will invite both you, uh, both of you uh, may come and say to you, give this person your, your place, and then in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go to sit down at the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher, then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. He said also to the one who had invited him, when you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or your, or your um, na rich neighbors in, in case they may invite you in return and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you for you will be repaid in the resurrection of the righteous. The word of the Lord, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. So reading is not one of my fine gifts in life, as you have discovered. <laughs> also, I have to tell you, in the first lesson, that last little line that Stacy read that wasn't up there, we took it out. <laughs> because, But that's how the verse ends. Just random half a verse. It's the weirdest thing. But that wasn't Stacy's fault. That was, we just, we took it out of there. We just forgot to take it out of this. So, um, sometimes, you know, the Bible wasn't written with chapters and verses. I hope that doesn't surprise you. Um, they were put in later. I have no idea how they made some of those decisions because they're weird. But. So with that, let us pray. Gracious God, you humbled yourself as Christ and came to live among us. And not as someone that people honored and respected, but someone who was um, questioned and feared and thought to be um, present just to make their lives miserable. Help us to be humble to always go to those who are most in need, to be willing to reach out when others are not, to give from the great gifts you have given us, and to share in all that we have. In your name we pray. Amen. So when I uh, was coming home from Israel, I spent the night, we got in at a weird time, and so I didn't want to try and connect my flights that night. It was bad enough as it was. So we spent the night in D.C., and the next morning before I had to go catch my flight, I went downstairs for breakfast. And when I was sitting there, it was just me, um, a gentleman walked in who was obviously homeless. His clothes were incredibly worn. He didn't have shoes on. It was raining outside. I mean, the poor man was a mess. And he came in, wanting to have breakfast. And most people in that situation would have made him leave. But the girl who was working at the breakfast counter asked him to go ahead and sit down, not way up front, but sit down right as he came in the door, and she would bring him his food. And she brought him a nice plate of, of a little bit of everything, because she really didn't know what he needed or wanted, and she got him a nice big cup of coffee, and he sat there and ate. And the whole time I'm watching over at the, like the um, reception desk, and apparently one of the managers was there, eyeballing this whole situation. And I was so afraid that she would come and basically make the man leave. She didn't. The man ate. They gave him some more coffee, and he left. And then the girl was called over by the manager. My guess is she was told not to do that. But who did it hurt for this man to come in? Because I can tell you they throw away more food at those places than, than ever gets eaten. And she graciously not only brought him in, but served him. 
How gracious was that? She could have asked him to leave, and she didn't. This morning, everything, all of our lessons talk about um, showing humility and showing hospitality to those um, who are not in places of authority, who are not looked up to in our society. We are supposed to welcome those people who nobody else invites. But do we do that? Really? You know, one of the things I love about our church is, and we really do in welcome and embrace people as they come in our doors. We don't have a lot of people that just show up here. Um, there's lots of reasons for that, and we're working on a couple of them, but that's a whole nother story. But when they do come in here, they are welcome. No matter who they are, what they look like, their clothes are tattered. And we've seen a little bit of everything, and it's been wonderful to see the way that they are embraced. But when we are in our day-to-day -day lives, our society is one that has us afraid in many ways. You know, we hear these horror stories on the news about people having these ruses where they act like they're in need and then you go to help them and something happens to someone. But the reality is that most people who are in need or showing that they are in need really are in need. And we may not be able to tell who they are. But the chances of one thing versus the other, the chances of us being that one person that comes across the crazy person isn't real high. Now that isn't to say we shouldn't be careful and mindful of our surroundings and all of that. We shouldn't put ourselves in harm's way. Um, but we have created a society that is so careful that it's almost impossible for us to really invite or um, embrace those in need because if we do, something might happen. Or the other fear or the other reason for not reaching out to those folks who are in need, those folks who are homeless or um, hungry or whatever, is because we believe that they are going to go use that money for alcohol or drugs, and we just don't want to be a part of that. And that happens sometimes. It really does. And there are scammers out there. And the list goes on. There are lots and lots of reasons our society has given us to not open our hearts and minds to those who are the lowest among us. Lots of reasons. But I believe each of us has to find that place where we know we can reach out to those people in need in a very real way so that we are getting to know them, so that we are getting to understand the needs in our community. Now, I'm not saying you have to give money to every person when you drive in Houston who's on a street corner. We would all be poor. I mean, let's face it. But there are organizations that help people. One of the um, biggest... Um, I think, challenges to us as people of faith who are not suffering in financial means, not suffering in our knowledge of having a home, not worrying about what we're going to eat tomorrow. By the way, I had so many hot dogs left over because I expected these kids to eat a lot more. <laughs> Y'all are not helping me out here. We throw away more food than we know what to do with, right? So the problem with us who are not in that kind of a need 
is that we think just throwing money at those issues is enough. I've done my part. And I am here to tell you that no matter how much you give, well, that's not true, but, but whatever you give is certainly welcomed and invited, but it doesn't fix anything. The only way we are going to truly help people, the only way we are going to live the way that Jesus did, inviting them to our table or joining them at theirs, as the case may be, is if we put ourselves in places where there are people in that sort of need. And not just handing them money, but to sit down with them and have a conversation. A few years back, several of us, me and uh, Sarah Smart and Letha and Diana, <coughs> did a um, poverty project um, where we went to some training for once a month for about four or five months. And I think the one thing I came away from that realizing is that churches, as well as other individuals, don't realize how important it is for us to sit down with people in order to understand their need. We look at them and we see that they're hungry, so their need is food. Let's give them food. But that doesn't fix anything. Yes, they might need a meal today, or tomorrow, or for the next week, but more importantly, they need somebody that can help them figure out how to get a job. And we talk about the fact that there are so many jobs out there that nobody is taking, and there are, but it is really tough for people who are homeless to actually apply and interview and go to get a job. They don't have an address, their clothes smell, they look awful because they've been out in the weather. How do you go and, I mean, you can apply, on, apply online if you can get to a library, because obviously you can't do that if you can't get to a computer. But then what do you do when you have to interview? I mean, there are just these issues that people who are suffering in our communities have that I just never even thought about until we went on this, uh, when we did this project. So we need to not just assume what the needs in our community are, but to actually talk to people and find out what the needs in our community are. Yes, I'm trying to use proper English and it's all sounding funny. And what is our role in that? Here's some major realities. We are a small congregation with a limited, sometimes struggling budget. So our resources are not grand and glorious. But have you ever noticed how we get together and provide any time we hear that there's a real need? I have never come to this congregation with a need that we've had and been turned away. We have provided food. We have made Christmas great for families. We have, you name it. People are stepping up and reaching out to Tabertha, our daycare director who has now started her treatments for cancer. Our congregation is a part of that with her. Our congregation knows how to be connected to people but we don't do it a whole lot. So what is our role in this community? I do not have the magic answer for that yet. We are working on it. But I can tell you that it's going to start with us actually doing these activities where the, the community is invited in and providing them, inviting them to come join us for worship. We do the... Um, uh, Halloween. Trunk or treat. Goodness. See, I told you, I didn't get enough sleep this weekend. Um, we do trunk or treat every, every year, and we have tons of people, not just from the school or our church, but from the community that come in. And they love it. 
But how many of us have sat with them and said, we would love for you to join us for church one Sunday. Just come and see what we're all about. See how it feels to be a part of this community. God did not put us in this world to be isolated. We are to be people of faith, a community of faith that works for the good of God's people. And God's people are everyone. And we have to find that. But what are the things that keep you from doing something with people who are different than you? I truly believe that the only way we're going to deal with any sort of racism, any sort of homophobia, any sort of any of that stuff that's out there now, is by us sitting one-on-one, -on -one, working together with people who are different than us, for us to understand there are people just like us, with different understandings of life, or different views, or different life circumstances that have put them in a challenging place in their life. And so hopefully we can offer some of those opportunities for you to get involved. But what are we doing day to day? How have we welcomed our neighbors? Think about that neighbor that drives you nuts. You all have them. If you don't, good for you. <laughs> I have wonderful neighbors, but we do have some cuckoos too. <laughs> Why not bring the cookies to them and say, I'm just doing something nice for my neighbors and I wanted to share cookies with you or whatever. If you don't bake cookies, you know you can do the slice and bake. They will be dumbfounded for one thing. My luck, they may have diabetes and can't eat them, but they will love the gesture and it will open a door. And then when we've opened that door, say, hey, do you go to church anywhere? Hey, would you like to come here? Would you like to come and be a part of our community? You do not have to be in a church in order to love God or serve God or do the things God has called you to do. But we are called to be a part of a community. And collectively, we are to be welcoming those who are other, whatever that means the weirdos in the world. And when they come here, they realize we are weirdos too. And we work together. Because I am the queen of you weirdos. <laughs> God has given us so much. You know, we talk about blessings. And blessings aren't, I mean, our food... Um, our ability to eat, our ability to have a home has a lot to do with our work and all that stuff. It's not like God loves us more and that's why we have enough and somebody doesn't. There's lots of reasons we have enough and others don't. But when we have enough, it's our responsibility to help provide for others, however you can do that. I know that we um, all get a little frustrated with the fact that as we've come out of COVID, COVID's kind of, I mean, it's still there, but it's not near what it was. I am not going to the hospital and doing end-of-life things for 11 people in a day. That's not happening. And thank you, Lord, for that. But as we've come out of COVID, our church attendance has been you guys have been amazing. This group of people have been here all the time. Please don't stop. <laughs> but we're all frustrated that the pews aren't near as full as they once were. Because people are afraid, because people got comfortable staying home. But let us remind people of how important a community of faith, standing side by side, caring for one another, how important that is because as we come together we begin to see the needs around us 
and we can do something great. If you happen to know of some organization in the area or some need in the area that we can be a part of, let me know. I'm jumping on that. We can't have 12 things we're involved in, but we can have one or two. And we can do it with all our heart and soul. So let us find that. And be the ones who invite the weirdos to our table. Our communion table is open to all people. And as you come through communion, if you are... I don't have any visitors, but if you're somebody who hasn't been here before, I'm not going to ask you for your credentials. I'm not going to ask you, well, do you really know what's going on here? I'm not going to ask you any of that. I will give you communion the way I do everyone because Jesus is here for all of us. Let us be the ones that invite the weirdos to our table so that we can all understand that we can all be weird together and bring the glory of God to a world in need. Amen. confess our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended, he ascended into, into heaven. heaven. He is he seated, seated at the right hand, hand of the Father, and, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic, the Holy Catholic Church, Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. For the church and its leaders, we pray. Uphold all deacons, pastors, and bishops who serve and teach your people. Awaken in your church a spirit of invitation that reaches ever outward. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. 
For the well-being of creation and its inhabitants, we pray. Stir in us reverent awe for the beauty of the natural world, for oceans and lakes, rivers and streams, forests and deserts. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. For the nations and peoples of the world, we pray. Sustain the efforts of those who pursue justice and equity for all. Defend and accompany all immigrants and refugees and all who are persecuted for their ethnic origin or religious beliefs. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. For all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, we pray. Be present with those who live in isolation or fear, especially those who are incarcerated or detained. Comfort all who are sick or grieving, especially those we hold in our hearts. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. For this congregation and its ministries, we pray. Prepare children, teachers, and youth ministry directors for a new year of learning. Embolden our witness to invite others to the table. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. For all the saints who confessed God's name, we give thanks. May we cling to the promise of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Merciful God, Receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. Amen. The, peace of the, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. <laughs> I guess we missed that. <laughs> Say peace to one another. Okay. Please stand. I just want to point out something to you. When, um, when we have new songs that we're going to be singing, like from the new hymnal that we have, um, we're going to have Trish play them for the offertory, because this is one of them, right? So she'll play the offertory and sing it so you'll hear it. It'll be the um, uh, prelude the day we're going to sing it, and then we'll sing it during the service. So just kind of hoping that hearing it once or twice will make it easier to sing. So, that's all. Let us pray. <laughs> Blessed are you, O Lord, o Lord our God, God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts. With them, we offer ourselves to your service and dedicate our lives to the care and redemption of all that you have made. For the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, <clears throat> in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out your Holy Spirit, that by this holy communion we may know the unity we share with all of your people in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, through him, with him, and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, Our Father who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and, and the, the power, and, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, The body and blood of our Lord Jesus, uh, the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you.
Please stand as you are able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let's pray. Almighty God, you provide the true bread from heaven, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Grant that we who have received the sacrament of his body and blood may abide in him and he in us, that we may be filled with the power of his endless life now and forever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with, fa with favor and give you peace. Amen. Oh. We got some backup music. Love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God, God and, and we, we will. will.